Hi, this is the fellow passenger speaking and in this video we are going to continue our journey exploring generative music techniques and more specifically we are going to look at effects and effects chains today. I would have loved to have used the project that I put together last week when we were continue the journey looking at beats. However, I've bumped into a bit of a problem. I updated my Ableton 11 to the latest version. I realized I hadn't done that, but that has caused a problem. The good thing is that this version of Ableton is supporting the Mac Silicon. In other words, my M1 Mac mini that I'm running this on, but in Max for Live, there are certain things that may stop working. And one of them is the Grids plugin that I was using and basing my beats generation on. It's a plugin that I haven't made and to get it to work again, there is a piece of code that will need recompiling. And I don't have the original source code for that. I have reached out to the, the developer to see if he can do something about it. I've also had some ideas from another much more famous YouTuber, Ned Rush, who's also looking into the problem and see if it can be solved in a different way. My Max for Live skills are still fairly basic, even though I've just gotten over the threshold and I'm now able to start building a few useful tools that I'm using quite a lot. Okay, enough about that. We are going to talk about effects today and I want to give you a little glimpse of what we're going to do. I have prepared a very basic beat just using the the 808 kit that comes with uh, that comes with Ableton and it just sounds like this. Nothing generative about that. It is just a static loop, but we are going to turn it into things like this. Boom. <laughs> Okay, that was just a little example of the few things that we are going to explore in this video. Before we start, as per usual, if you have seen my videos before, I usually say this, but please, if you haven't already, please subscribe and like this video. That would mean loads to me. And it's one of the few ways for me to actually know that these videos are somewhat appreciated. If you want to take that a step further, I've got my Patreon page where as a subscriber, you will get access to loads of downloads and including the this project file that we are making today. But also I have made a fair few videos in the past with a lot of low downloads associated with them. So please check that out. I also have a new way of supporting me. If you don't want to subscribe to the Patreon and you've already liked and uh, subscribed to my YouTube channel, I now have some nice merchandise that you may be interested in. So I have literally just set up my first little shop where you can buy some t-shirts and tote bags and stuff. There is going to be more stuff added as time goes on, but this is at least a start. So if you feel that you just want to do a one-off in quotation marks donation to me and to support this channel, please consider checking this out if this is something that you might be interested in. All right, let's get back into Ableton and go full screen. All right, let's talk effects. 
I'm going to say a few things that may be very basic to some, but I think it's still important to mention them if you are fairly new to this or there might be things that you just haven't considered before. Um, I also realize I um, got a th premium third party plug in there. So just ignore what I'm doing now. I'm just going to put the stock reverb in there. Anyway, so you might be aware of, you can have these different channels. They could be MIDI channels where you put your VSTs and MIDI instruments, and then you can have audio channels um, where you can drag your samples or do recordings into. But you also have these return channels to put effects in. And just to illustrate, I'm going to play, let me see what's happening there. That's got something attached to it. Oh, uh, let's remove that. Okay, so we got our A to A channel. And these ones, A and B here, they correspond to these return channels. And you can see here one says reverb and the other one says echo. So if I play this beat and I turn that up. You could see here that the audio went into the reverb and you could yeah hear the reverb and the same with the echo, which I think has got. Yes, it's got the, the echo effect in there. Another Ableton stock plugin. You may ask, why do you want to have the effects on a separate channel? You may not ask that. You may be, you may have worked that out already, but I just want to mention it. I think there was a time I was there too, um, when you had a physical mixing desk and you had these aux channels and you might have a one or two or maybe four, or you had a massive deck desk with six that could send any of your channels on that mixing desk you could send that off into a reverb because in Ableton now in a sense you can you as long as your computer can cope you can just add as many reverbs on each channel as you want and you may see there is a benefit of being able to tweak each reverb slightly differently, whether it is for some percussion or it's some really lush pads or whatever it might be. But back in the day, if you were a home producer, you didn't necessarily have stacks and stacks and stacks of hardware reverbs and other effects. So that was an economical way of sending lots of different instruments into the same effect unit. So why do we want return channels now when we can have loads of reverbs? There is a big difference here and I am going to show you why. So if I, yeah, that's all turned off. If I just place a reverb here, so you can hear, let's make a really long tail. We just do the decade. So you can obviously change the drive wet here if you just want to send something to the reverb. However, if you turn that to completely dry, you will cut off the signal. So if I do this here now, as soon as I turn that down, it just strangles the reverb. So let's remove that. And I'm just going to go do the same here. I'm just going to turn the decay time up because it's easier to hear. So let's play the beat again. So as you can hear that, when I turn that down, it doesn't actually stop the reverb. It just 
stops sending it to the reverb but what has already been sent over there is going to be um, still being processed so you can create these little random tails for you know of, of reverb so then you can do things where you catch a clap or a snare or something and you just every now and then do that that's an interesting way of doing it i just wanted to get that cleared the difference between putting something on um on the channel compared to using a return track um the other thing is obviously like if you go absolutely crazy with your effects and you have loads of them and your computer is not up to it that could also be a slightly more economical way of doing it because you can group your effects and you can use um you can yeah you can send whatever channels you want over to them also like if 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 you have a particular sounding reverb that is set up in a particular way and that's the one you would like to use throughout the track that's also a way of doing it well while i'm thinking of it the other thing is if you want to render your stems for your track basically depending on how you want to group them but let's say you want to render out the audio for each individual channel to give to someone else to do a mix before the mastering or something this would the the return channels would count as their own separate channels which means that you would still have a dry original version without effects on and then the effects would be a completely separate thing that could be added on top if that's something you want to do anyway this was a bit of a side note we are going to look at effects and we are going to use both on channel and return channel effects okay let's get glitchy um if you have followed my channel for a while you may know that i have uh i'm using the expression control too much <laughs> uh it is true uh i do um but it was also um a bit of a a wake up call because the expression control is great and I usually go and just set all the channels to random and sometimes that's exactly what I want but I've also realized that not always just to illustrate now uh, I've set all the channels to random so as the drums are playing these are getting triggered and you can do crazy stuff with this so if we take um, a delay Let's take, let's take, we can take the echo. I am going to go into character and turn re-pitch off. Otherwise it just, um, well, I'll show you what happens if that's on, but then we set that to milliseconds. And now when I play this, Yeah, you can hear it goes absolutely crazy. And if I turn re-pitch on, it's just going to be unbearable, I think. Well, it goes quite psychedelic, but yes, it, it becomes very uncontrolled. Sometimes you want that complete and randomness, but I have come to the conclusion that even if you're making regenerative music to create something that your brain can latch onto therefore looping material is good and it's interesting that you can loop almost anything and after a little while your brain will just accept it 
and latch on to it. So we are going to try to do that now. So I have got another MIDI channel here, which is empty. And I am going to uh, take an expression control. By the way, I'm just getting so used to it, so I forget about it. I've got the TFP expression control here. It's exactly the same as the one that comes with Ableton. The only difference is that I've added these labels where you can type things in because I use so many of these that uh, if I don't, if I can't mark them all up, I have no idea if I open the project tomorrow and I've got 20 of those, like which one goes where, because the label that you get here on the map button is just not enough. So if you don't have this, that's fine. You can still use the one that you find under MIDI effects and expression control. Um, yeah, that's that's fine. However, if you're sponsoring me on Patreon and you're interested in this labeled version, it's all yours. Yeah, okay, that's out of the way. So we got the MIDI channel here. We have added an expression control, but this is never going to trigger now because we have no MIDI notes coming in here. And this is con triggered by MIDI notes. We are going to take one of the free sequencers that we can download for Max for Live. Um, it's again, it's not made by me and it's free for you to download. So <clears throat> it looks like this. At the moment, that's running at. Oh. Let's just uh, not play that yet. So, the step sequencer, I'm not going to explain exactly how it works, but it's a 16 steps and it's got different note values here that it spits out. Um, rather than using the random in the expression control, we can combine this with uh, key tracking. So now, even though you can still randomize by, let's make the range a bit bigger. We can do something like that. I'm just gonna mute that track because otherwise we got the annoying drums. So you can see that value where we've set it to key track is jumping around based on this. So if we set them all to the same, you can see that's, oh well, I, some of them are slightly off, but that's hardly moving now. <clears throat> you can use this to your benefit. So if we take that and then we map that to the time, oh, need to turn that channel on again. I'm going to make really short delay times. So I'm going to set them. I'm going to make this a bit slower. We do eight notes as well. And let's do most of them. Most of them the same. And then we have some at the more extreme values. Maybe we have a low one as well. The probability needs to be 100%. Um, just a little side note, because that means that otherwise the, the notes might not always trigger. You can hear that now that effect glitching is now repeating. So we can do, we can just yeah, actually just press randomize it. So here, 
we we talked about it the other week where it's up to you how random you want something to be you can go in and adjust some things and you can obviously just have it completely random uh, and i think it's an interesting little technique so let's say probability thing all the time that needs to be a hundred percent so if you want to randomize this make sure you click on note because if you have view all it will randomize the probability as well but we just want to randomize the notes sounds like an 808 beat anymore and you can see how that repetition makes it quite different from when we just had it completely random and we're going to continue we're going to put that in a group and we are going to look at how we can use this technique on some other effects. I think this is um, this sort of idea breathes new life into some of the stock plugins that comes with Ableton. And especially if you're into IDM type stuff, it is it's good. <laughs> I don't know what to say. Um, let's go in and we can do that with the Redux, which is the bit crushing thing. So we solo that. We'll take the, take the loop out of the mix. And we are going to, uh, put that into a group and we can label that something. So that's the delay. And yeah, we know that's for the, oh, that needs to sit inside that group. And we should label this, uh, what should we call it? Effects um, control. I don't know how to spell control. Okay, there we are. And we wanted we have the Redux already and we actually want a similar setup here. We want the step sequencer in a new channel. Uh, it's the prob yeah, probability is all up and then we can set note. So we don't have view all because when we hit random now, probability is still going to be max. Why was one not max before? They're all max now. That's fine all is good and then we are going to grab the what's it called it is called the tfp expression control there we go and we are going to do a similar thing And now it's doing velocity. We don't want that. We want that to react to the key, key tracking. See that one is not changing much. So we just need to change the scale. We need a bit more variation. Maybe that sequence is too fast. Maybe we want that to have eighth note as well. Again, you can hear how that loop um, 
is affecting it. And I just want to compare it to if we take the random instead and I'll just randomize that. It is interesting, but you don't get any continuity. So we are going to use the key track for this one. Um, it's actually interesting to mix the two and we will be doing that in a moment. Okay, so we got that one and we could actually use either key tracking or the velocity to, um, let's do that. We can use the velocity because that will also be a steady loop. So if we go into the velocity and we can randomize that a bit and then we map that to this. And the good thing with this is you can heard with you could hear when the bit depth got too low, it almost just the sound disappeared. So you can set the minimum value that it will randomize between. So it will never get to zero now. Let's see if that's enough. Actually, let's do another key tracking here. So that's going to follow uh, the notes, and we can do the we can do the dry wet maybe. Let's look at the notes again. Let's make this a really wide range. This is perfect for your little IDM fest. Let's say we are happy with that one and let's continue exploring. Let's go into the spectral resonator. That's an interesting one. Let's solo that one. And we can do the same thing. This one can actually listen to MIDI notes, but we are not going to do that today. Okay, let's do another sequencer that you can use that's also free and interesting. Um, oh, come on. I can't even type on the keyboard. It's the mono sequencer. So let's take that one and put it uh, on its own channel. And that's also got a random function. And you can also have with this one, which you can't with this, um, this one only does 16 steps. Uh, this one does up to 64. And you can also, you can sequence the pitch, but you can also sequence the octave and you can quickly get, yeah. It has other benefits, this one, compared to the other one, depending on what you are after, but for good measure, let's use this one. And I felt like for, for what we're doing, the eight notes works quite well. And then we need the, you know what? I'm not using the labels here because everything is dedicated to a specific effect anyway. So I'm just going to take the regular expression and control. What a cheat. Oh, that's delay. And this one is the bit crush. I can't remember what it's called. It is called a redux, but now it's called bit crush. And this one is resonator. <laughs> Okay, so let's create some notes. So if we take the key, no, not random, we want the key tracking. On a side note, I went to the local cafe this morning and there were some people sitting at the table next to me and they asked me, are you French? 
I don't know what it is. Every time someone guess where my accent is from, I get a different answer. The other week I had someone saying South African and no. I don't know why people don't hear that it's Swedish. I don't have a good explanation why that's not the obvious one. Just a little side note of surprise. Okay, let's see what this does if we... So we need to randomize our notes, or we can do octaves, then we get more extreme variation. And you know what? We can then use a little bit of random here just to infuse a little bit of chaos into it because there is hopefully enough in there to create a um, something for the brain to latch on to. This one sounds nice if we have a really short decay. Maybe we take uh, the velocity. Where is where is velocity? There. And we use that for for the stretch to create a bit of so the shift which is completely random creates a bit of unpredictability but the frequency and the stretch follows the same set pattern and then you can do here I think you can do the velocity one slightly shorter but you keep the octave one as uh, 16 so you're gonna get a bit of a different overlap is that syncopation syncopation maybe <laughs> Sounds nice and messy. I'm just showing you some techniques here rather than making a finished track and I'll just hope that some of these ways will be inspiring. We talked about the send and return as well and we can use that to our benefit too. So let's do one more of the these channels. We can use that mono sequencer. I'm just going to copy that because then I don't have to go and uh, return. Then I don't have to go and find them all again. That is return reverb. And I'm going to just reset those and we are going to generate some new velocities, some new octaves and maybe even some notes. And let's set that to, no, that's the wrong, <laughs> that's, um, I mapped that to the microphone, so let's not do that. We want to map that to the, to the beats. And for this one, I'm just going to go in here. For most of them, we probably don't 
want to have any or hardly any reverb and then occasionally it just sets something off. Let's just have some more reverb time. It's interesting. Oh, stop. Uh, oh, whatever. Maybe we should just call this one reverb because this one is controlling the send and return. And then let's put another another chain here and we put a reverb in here. And then we do that thing where we manipulate the dry wet so we get the reverb absolutely cutting out and it's just going to create, create a bit of a different feel which can be interesting in this sort of context. So not random, we want the velocity. Uh, I'm so used to clicking on that random so it happens. To There's a little bit too much going on there. So let's go into the velocity and see what's happening there. We probably want a little bit of... Do you know what? That sounds a bit crap, actually. Let's not do a reverb. We have already got a delay. There is, I mean, there's so many effects you can do this to. And I think we can take the saturator, which is interesting because that has got the sinoid, which creates a bit of wave folding I think so let's go into this and then we map the velocity to that I almost want this sequencer to run even slower let's do it actually turn that drive up let's just do 3 db and the output we compensate and turn that down 3 db I think you are getting the gist with that one. And to mash this up even further, we are going to create another chain which is empty. 
because sometimes we might want to have our beats coming in, you know, actually sounding like the original. And then we go into the chain and we drag these blue bars across all of them and then we right click and we distribute them evenly and also I made sure that I removed the solo so now so as you can hear this one is still operating so it's sending stuff up to that channel can't remember what this one was empty that's our saturator I just want to tweak I just feel I want to tweak that one a bit. Uh, the resonator, there was the velocity. Ah, here's exactly when I should have used my expression control because then I could have typed it out because now I just have to sort of try to guess a bit, but we set that back to eighth note. Nice. Okay, so we have our effects chain here. I'm also going to make yet another chain. And that sits underneath it all. I just pull, yeah, I just drag the volume down a bit because then you will have a little bit of the original 808 all the time, no matter if, with the other, if the other effects are playing because some of them are a bit more extreme than others. And now I am going back to my roots and add more ran random. We want to have some random action in there. Let's just take a step sequencer, make a new one. Let's be lazy and take that expression control we got random, but we want this one to run very slowly. Let's do half notes. I just noticed by default that note is not 100% probability. There you go. Let's turn that up 100 and then we set the random to here. So every did I set it to half note? Yes, it is going to select a different effects chain to send this through, which is good idea for generative IDM stuff. Yeah, you agree, don't you? You can hear that some of them are slightly different in volume and you can obviously go in and tweak that, but you can also be lazy. Are you lazy? Let's just recompress it a bit. We can have a bit of a limiter on there and Gosh, I keep getting these BBC breaking news. I bet every single one of them is to do with the death of the Queen the other day. Very sad, but also just like pace yourself. We don't need to drown in regurgitated stories. Pay some respect to her family. They probably just don't want the stuff down their throats. They just need some space, right? Okay. I was going to change this one so it runs a bit quicker. Uh, 
and to spice or space this up a bit more some other thing i like to do on when doing effects is like if you're having a bit of a compressor sometimes it's quite nice to have a reverb crop just in front of it because the compressor will grab the reverb tail and amplify that and you just yeah just get a bit of a obviously it depends on what feeling you're going for and then we can drum bus it like an idiot and just to be sure i'm going to take a utility and put at the end and make sure the bass is mono there is some more effects we're going to talk about too and they are third party but they are free i have done a few videos in the past where i talk about the melda productions effects and if i only got to choose one from their collection then it would be their comb filter it's perfect for idea idm i can throw some on there in a bit but i feel like i've done videos on that before uh, another free one that we can also just throw out throw in i'm not going to go into it in any great detail is the the grain strain which i can't find now yes there grain strain one that i haven't talked about which i think sounds great uh, is audio damage audio damage automaton it's now for free to download for, download from their website and it is a buffer effect that picks parts of your audio crush it loop it and do all sorts of stuff i am just going to throw that on here so everything will be running through it and it's got like a game of life type of thing happening here that will determine if the different effects are triggered <laughs> I'm not going to go through this in detail, but just a few things. If you click on the master and you check out this section here, if you set it to mix, then this almost becomes like a dry wet control, I suppose, because if it's on one of them, then as soon as any of the effects kicks in, it just uh, cuts the dry signal and that becomes really dramatic which is interesting but if you put everything through it you might just want to tame it a little bit and you can go into uh, these different things replicate which is some stutter effect bit crusher modulate um, well, there's a stutter here. I don't know what replicate is then. This is some sort of delay maybe. Um, and you can see this, I'm in the green repl re replicate now and I can draw green dots and I can draw some, draw some bit crusher dots and the modulate and stutter. And the sequence is these white things here and they, move around as the audio comes in and whenever a white dot reaches like a blue or an orange or a red or a green whatever it triggers that effect and you can go in there and change the settings for them
I think it sounds quite interesting. And we can just to spice this section up a little bit. Uh, we're ne not necessarily going to modulate them now. Just that I think you know how to do that now. Uh, where do you live? Let's do the Melda production comb filter. Lots of their other effects are fantastic too. So just don't take my word for it and just use the comb filter, but go and investigate. Let's uh, do that. And then we can just go. In. These ones have these, whoops, uh, good randomizing effects. That sounded good. And then we can also take the grain strain. Another uh, company you should be checking out is, oh, what did I do now? I just, I just ruined the um, comb filter. Let's see, Grain Strain wants its own channel. And then you, now we have just used this on the, on the beats, but you can obviously create different effects chains for, you know, your different channels and your bass and your melodies and pads and glitch effects or whatever you have. Um, and again, do a chain like this for a return channel that then gets manipulated, which can be interesting too. This one can actually benefit from being randomized. I know it is a, a bit, we can, we can do whatever we want. We can be irresponsible adults and put a, on the, where did that go? Which channel did that end up on? Okay, we got the kick drum and I'll put a an expression control with all of them random and we can be irresponsible adults and we do the grain mode, maybe the grain length and grain frequency and grain sync. I have no idea what this is going to do to the sound. I'm sure that high pitch bleep was from the grain strain. Well, you get the idea. You have to go in and tweak it. And that's where your skill as a generative musician comes in to dial things in and out and make something that is going to generate something interesting, even though you did not necessarily hold the bow for the held. You didn't hold the, you didn't hold the bow for the violin. Is that what I'm trying to say? You didn't press the key on the piano. Your voice did not sing into the microphone. The machine did all that, but you, had to set the machine up to do it. Another company you should be checking out is Glitch Machines, who have a range of really great free effects. These ones are not the free ones. I shall download them again because they're pretty damn good. These ones are some premium ones that I bought when they had a massive sale on one day. Okay. I don't know if there is more to say about effects. 
I want to talk maybe about two premium effects that I use. I am not going to include them in this file because I want you to be able to open it in case you don't have them. So we're not looking at mastering and doing the final polished product here, but we have um, Fab Filters Pro Q3, which was the once I changed computers and also, shall I say this, I decided not to use pirated software anymore. I went to buy Fab Filters Pro Q3 because that was the first one I bought because it was so important to me and I find it way more useful than the EQ8 that comes with Ableton. If you want me to, I'm happy to talk through what I do with it. The other one is the Gulfos, which, go and check it out. It is a sort of mastering plugin that uses AI to tidy things up and it's doing it in real time it, to go in and surgically fix everything at every part of your track. You can still do that if you want to, but this just helps so much. They, the guys behind it and girls and whatever they want to define themselves as, have done an amazing job understanding the human ear and what frequencies tend to annoy us and which ones we tend to like. And then it allows you with some very simple control controls, just dial that in a bit. And what comes out at the other end just sounds so much better. I think that concludes this episode of modulating effects and the next one, which will be in about a week's time, we are going to look at melodies and also I will have taken one of my old techniques and taking in it, taking it a one step further, thinking about that repetition and how that is a good tool to use to allow your brain to latch onto stuff. So please check back in a week's time. Don't forget to subscribe and Patreon and my merch shop. There will be links in the description below. Is there anything else I want to say? Yes. So I did a little bit of an in-between video earlier this week, and that was riffing off Ned Rush's video where he takes a 90s dial-up modem sound and makes a track out of it. Then I did it. And then after me, user-friendly sounds did it too. And if you have not come across his work, check it out. Well, only if you find IDM and glitch and things like that appealing. If you don't like that sort of stuff, his channel may change your mind. So you should still go and check it out. All right. Thank you for watching and hope to see you again soon. Meow.